Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while since I've released a review and I'm really looking forward to get back to making more content. And it's my favorite time of year now, it's October and Halloween is quickly approaching. And so my channel's gonna shift a little bit. I'm excited to get into doing some reviews of some horror content. Obviously, you know, I like all kinds of movies over all kinds of genres, but horror is definitely one of my favorites. And my hope this month is to kind of shine some light on some underappreciated horror gems. And I'm also planning on doing some ranking lists of some of my favorite horror franchises, which I'm really looking forward to and possibly if you're lucky, some new horror movies as well. But yeah, this is my favorite month. I love the season, I love the movies, and I'm really excited to do some reviews of some movies that I feel like don't get a lot of light shed on them, and also talk about some of my favorites that have kind of built my love for the genre. First up, I'm gonna talk about a series of films that not a lot of people have heard of and that have a lot of controversy around them and that is going to be the Grave Encounters series from the Vicious Brothers. I'm gonna talk about the two movies together because I see them sort of connected rather than separate entities and actually, I watched the first one and I enjoyed it and was really intrigued by it enough to watch the second one. And after watching the second one, it actually grew my appreciation for the first one and the two as a whole. So I'm gonna talk about a little bit of them in detail. I'm not gonna give too much away, but I would recommend checking them out. They're currently streaming on Shudder. It's definitely worth it. It's a good start to the Halloween season to watch these movies. I'll just tell you that right up front. Grave Encounters is directed by the Vicious Brothers, and the movie opens with this Hollywood producer at a desk, and he's essentially saying that he was brought these tapes uh, for this show called Grave Encounters, which is like, discount Zach Baggins ghost adventures um, where this guy Lance Preston and his team go and investigate these paranormal sightings and go to different locations and shoot. He got six episodes and the sixth episode is all real and he essentially says that none of the footage has been edited other than cut for time and that what you're about to watch is all legitimate. We jump into Lance Preston and his crew. They're shooting on site, doing interviews with the caretaker of the institute, people that do security for the institute, uh, kids that have visited there. There's some really funny interviews that are like really badly acted. It's pretty fucking hilarious. I'm showing a little bit of background to the institute and the doctor who worked there and the experiments that take place. While we're given this information, you're kind of shown that Lance Preston is a hack and that uh, his whole crew is just like, they don't believe in any of it. They're just kind of doing it for viewership on TV and to have a program. Even go as far as to have a medium named Houston Gray who is like the most ridiculous personality I've ever seen in a movie. Just like one of those, I can hear the spirits, I can feel them in the room, and it's just pretty fucking funny. The guy just gives like the hokiest, the most ridiculous performance, it's hilarious. Actually, what we're fed immediately from Lance is that they're going to lock themselves in this insane asylum, the Collingwood Institute, overnight, and that the caretaker of the institute is gonna come back at 6 a.m. and unlock it and let them out. Obviously, you know, found footage is a genre that's been around for a while, starting as early as the Blair Witch Project. Obviously, paranormal activity is what kind of made it what it is. You know, I feel like a lot of those movies follow the same formulas. Some of them are better than others. It's really not one of my favorite genres. I feel like, uh, you know, it's good for low budget filmmakers because they can shoot handheld they can you know spend more of their times on either like visual effects or shock value or atmosphere and it needs something to really draw me in and one of the things about the grave encounter series as a whole that drew me in is the atmosphere obviously this crew was able to shoot on location and the institute that they're shooting in is very creepy. It's like things run down, the beds are really torn up. There's like this one set in particular with all these like bathtubs flipped over. They've got this like experimental room where there's like all this scalpels and hooks and stuff that this demented, deranged doctor was using to experiment on these people. And so it really develops that atmosphere and kind of drops you in. And I think that's what I appreciated the most about the grave 
creative encounters one especially is the atmosphere after we're introduced and they're locked in for a little bit nothing is happening and they're all kind of getting pissed off and that's when you're sort of seeing like the you know, what are we going to do to make this place interesting you know they've got cameras set up through the entire building caretaker earlier on in the film tells them that there's this window and then overnight he'll shut it and every morning when he comes back it opens and that's the first thing that we see that kind of starts this chain reaction of events where just craziness occurs i said one of the things i really appreciated is the setting it really adds overall to the experience uh, once things really kick into action it gets kind of out of control to where they go through doors to, to a spot in the asylum that they think they need to be, but it transforms into another part to where the building is morphing and changing to just confuse them. They're watching the time go by, six o'clock shows up, the guy never comes, it's one o'clock in the afternoon and it's still pitch black outside. And they start seeing things move and flip, they start seeing entities walk through the building and that's really what kind of drew me into the movie completely is it has a little bit of a slow start some of the dialogue is really hokey but that's to be expected with something like this but i think it really earns it towards the end when things really start to blow up and go crazy and one of the things i appreciate is even though these aren't like seasoned actors it's clearly you know a group of friends who got together had a budget and made a movie they're all committed to the performance enough to where you feel that anxiety and that overwhelming sense of dread that comes with these characters and as their story progresses to the third act and the finale you never once that headspace of like this is terrifying if i put myself in this situation how would I feel? And that's what I really appreciated about Grave Encounters. Yeah, that's Grave Encounters 1. It's a really well-made uh, found footage film. But now I'm going to jump into Grave Encounters 2. Grave Encounters 2, I do have to give a little bit of spoilers at the beginning. I'll jump, or I'll put a time code here to let you guys know to skip over the spoilers if you haven't seen in either one of the movies yet. At the end of Grave Encounters, seemingly everyone dies. And that's one of my issues with the, the Grave Encounters 1 is just like, how did these guys get a hold of this footage? It's not really anything that's ever explained. That's, you kind of have to suspend your disbelief, so to speak. The Grave Encounters 2, not directed by the Vicious Brothers, but it is produced by them, follows Alex Wright, who's a film student that is interested in being the next Wes Craven. Like, or, you know, the next John Carpenter. He has this big spiel at the beginning. It's super meta of, like, how shitty horror movies are now and, like, the cliches that uh, exist. The movie opens with people reviewing the first Grave Encounters movie and it gets that, like, meta moment of, like, oh, it's so self-aware. They're kind of poking fun at themselves where people are like, yeah, this is just a shitty found footage movie. It's terrible. And then the last review we get is our main character of the movie where he's like, yeah, yeah, one star, this movie is a piece of shit, it's poorly made. He starts getting comments from this YouTuber called Death Awaits, which from the first movie, it's on the door when they first walk in. Death Awaits, and it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the movie, and he's like, you need to look into this more, and you need to find out what happened. As in Grave Encounters 2, what we're told is Grave Encounters 1 is just a movie. They were hired actors, it was a, it was a movie that was shot on location, and that everything there wasn't real the producer has kind of you know said oh this is uh this is all fake these actors just just played this out and we published this horror movie so essentially this movie is our lead character and his friends deciding after visiting um the actor who played lance's mother who has dementia um that he never came home and that he starts to find out that literally everyone involved in the project never came home and decides that he wants to travel there and find out for himself whether or not it's real. I really liked Grave Encounters too. I actually liked it a lot more than the first one and that is because the tone, the atmosphere, and the uh, meta nature of the movie just kind of elevates it above the first one and that self-awareness kind of makes it more engaging and fun and being a film student myself it was fun to watch their like you know uh faux productions of the movies that they're making for class and 
it was so there's some really funny moments early on in the movie that kind of changed the tone of the first one i said this the second grave encounters movie actually improved the first one for me i really liked this one there's some things that are revealed throughout the movie that kind of tie the two together really well uh there's some super uh creepy moments like i said in the first one there's this thing where the building is sort of shifting, like they break through the the entry to the asylum, and when they try to walk out, it's just another part of the asylum, and it just start, starts to make our characters more crazy. This one gets so intense to where our characters escape the asylum, get into a car, get back to their hotel, get on an elevator, but when the elevator doors open, they're back in the asylum. There's a lot of really good editing in the movie that draws you in and keeps you engaged. And these characters are so over the top and ridiculous, they're just fun to watch. Uh, and our lead character is a mess of a human being and you're like, why the hell are you doing this? But it's so aware that it's being ridiculous that it makes it fun to watch. The movie gets so crazy to the point where Lance Preston is revealed to have been living in the asylum for nine years since the last movie was made and he's gone crazy but he's managed to figure out how the building shifts and moves and changes and they use him to help get out and that's where the movie really takes off into schlock territory and i just had a blast with it my problems with the movie uh it there's some moments that they use cgi that it's legitimately creepy and there's some moments with the CGI that just don't look good at all. But I was so invested in both movies that I didn't really care. Uh, they're just a lot of fun, uh, good entertaining found footage movies. If you're looking for something that's not really talked about much or you know, if you're in to just sit with a group of friends and want to just have a good time, watching these as a double feature would be a blast. Uh, I watched them sequentially back to back and it was so much fun. I just rewatched them again and it was just as entertaining. And actually after watching the second one, it grew my appreciation for the first one even more. So I would definitely recommend checking this out if you're interested in found footage at all, uh, paranormal investigation TV shows as hokey as they are. Check that out. Check this. Check these movies out if you're into that kind of thing. Have you guys seen Grave Encounters or Grave Encounters 2? If you have, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Did you hate it? Did you love it? I'm always interested to other people's opinions. If you like horror content, uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know what you guys want to see me talk about. I've got a whole bunch of stuff lined up coming up soon. I'm going to talk about some of my favorites. I'm going to do some tier ranking lists. I'm going to do uh, some classics that I love through the month of October, and I would love to hear you guys' opinions. Thanks so much again for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.